Look at how horrible this aquarium looks. Got a sponge. Let's go ahead and clean this, which took a little bit of time to clean up. It is messy. A1A Adventures fam, A1A aquatic enthusiast, outdoor adventurist, as well as aquarium hobbyist, welcome back. To all of the pet fans and animal fans and loyalty to this channel, we thank you so much for always staying consistent and watching our new videos, hitting that notification bell, liking our videos, and commenting. Those are major important factors in keeping the algorithm alive and keeping A1A Adventures going, and we're never gonna stop. So today's video, we are gonna go ahead and update you on our fish tanks and how we keep most of our fish tanks healthy healthy, clean, and spotless, and what we do and some of the techniques, how to do it yourself. Keep your fish tanks clean and your aquarium animals happy. Let's get to it. Because a happy pet is a happy pet owner is a happy everything all around. Keeping your fish tanks clean also makes it easier for the pet owner and for us as aquarium enthusiasts to have less maintenance, less water changes, and it keeps everything flowing a lot smoother. And it doesn't matter whether you have a freshwater fish tank or a saltwater aquarium, it does not matter whatsoever. Same rules of maintenance, applying it to and keeping it immaculate as much as we try to pursue perfection. Water parameters and the whole entire clean look for awesome aesthetics when we want to look at our fish as well as the gratifying journey thereof. On that note, let's get to some fish tanks. And we'll start off with this one, one of my favorite saltwater aquarium tanks we have containing a night sergeant fish a goby and a blenny, as well as some urchins that we have moved from some of our other fish tanks in order to give it space, as urchins are an awesome, where is Benny? There's, Blen There's Benny the blenny. Benny, what's going on? There's Jenny. There is Benny. And our unnamed fish, which once again, you can go ahead and comment any name suggestions below. And if we like the name, we'll choose it and we'll drop your comment in our future video. So we do have urchins. Several urchins. We have two black spiny urchins as well as a pencil urchin in here, which we have moved from some of our other tanks in order. Ooh, they're very feisty. They're very hungry right now. But look at that belly. That belly right there is always well fed. She is aggressive when it comes to eating. So it definitely takes away from the other fish if it's a crazy fish feeding frenzy, which we do from time to time on this channel. But getting back to the cleanliness of these tanks, we do water changes every two weeks. At most, would be a three week window of keeping the maintenance going. Now in the interim of, of course, look at all of that salt, all of the salt accumulation that happens on the top and typically on the outer rim of all of any saltwater fish tank as salt does evaporate and as you do need to refill your saltwater tanks in order to maintain the proper salinity as you previously had before, you refill it with fresh water as fresh water is the first portion of your well-balanced salinity in your aquarium that's gonna go first. So you wanna replenish the fresh water. Do not add more salt water unless you want to increase your salinity in your saltwater aquarium. That is major, major, major of an importancy in maintaining the proper salinity levels in which your coral and or fish are used to. And yes, if you are thinking about getting into the saltwater aquarium hobby, here is your fair warning, it is messy. So this is just a sponge. We're gonna go ahead and scrape off some of this salt. You ready? Oh goodness, what a mess, right? But it is worth it. Yes, it is worth it in the end. Look at these beautiful fish. And not to mention, in order to keep it, this isn't required. This is just an aesthetic. Ooh, this is just an aesthetic maintenance portion of having in any aquarium actually is you're going to have to that's all the salt that we just wiped off clean off most of the algae that forms here on the side that little bit of algae is actually on the sidewall so we're going to go ahead and scrape that off but these are just little maintenance personal pet peeves if you want to keep a good aesthetic clean view for your fish as opposed to the rocks and all of the sand and the algae that accumulates around those areas and those parts of the aquarium aren't as necessary to clean off because you do want to maintain and keep a good bacteria level and good algae natural level in your aquarium just to maintain the proper parameters and to not take away too much from the natural balance that it has accumulated over time, which to balance an aquarium with all of the good nitrates, nitrites, everything else, and all the water parameters that are required does take a significant amount of time to achieve that balance. So nothing happens overnight, but with maintaining a saltwater aquarium, these minute steps are absolutely imperative. And of course, it also depends on your lighting, as this is a bio cube by Coral Life, 32 gallon, 
I believe it's a 32 gallon. Yes, 32. And now with these good lights, these are designed as actinic bulbs and they're LED to basically grow coral. So it does have UV, which is ultraviolet properties that are delivered per the design of these bulbs that will enhance algae growth naturally on the rocks. So every other month I do diligently go through and put effort into scraping the rocks, keeping them clean, which once again isn't required depending on your light cycles that you have in your tank throughout the day. Always keep in mind that an excessive algae breakout is not good as algae thrives off of oxygen in the water as well as light. So it will starve the tank from having a proper oxygen level if algae is left in extreme excess. And you put the effort in, trust me, you won't have algae problems. Just maintain your tank and keep an eye on it at least every week to two weeks in order to keep any bad algae out to keep your fat fish healthy. And we can go ahead and look at the next tank. That would be the coral tank, our mini coral reef tank, as you've seen in many other of our other videos. And if you haven't, go ahead and check them out because it is a sight to see. Let's cut the lights. You can see it a little better. And this is the most newest update. It looks galactic with all those stars, right? It looks like those are stars in a galaxy back there. However, those are not stars. Those are tiny baby little feather duster worms developing everywhere. Whenever we got the most recent coral frag, which would be one of those in the middle there, it was infested with little baby feather duster worms all on the bottom of it. I didn't pay any attention to it, nor did I really care or think of it was a concern because it's not. They are actually good filter feeders in a saltwater aquarium tank. So those little tiny, which looked harmless, which they are harmless, feather duster worm particles, they decided to breed and colonize and create a huge infestation all over the rocks, which took a little bit of time to clean up. And now keep in mind this compared to some of our other recent posts when I showed this coral tank at its worst in a high algae concentration and infestation of the algae. This has been maintained very harsh. Recently in the past week, I did a huge scrub. I took all of the coral frags out. I took all of the rocks out. I cleaned off everything. So some of the corals a little bit, you know, still not retracted, just not fully back out because I did readjust the lights too. I readjusted our lighting systems. Once again, if you haven't seen how we first started this tank, there's so many videos on it. Check our playlist out here all on YouTube and you will see the growth that this has taken in almost two years of development in this mini coral reef tank right here. I've added a large variety of corals. I think we're up to about 19 different species of coral frags in this tank, many of which have been thriving beyond belief and have been spreading like crazy, such as those disc anemones right there. And we've also added some other disc anemones with a different glow to them that are absolutely beautiful. Look at that. And they will multiply and spread the same, just as this one has over here. I think it has about nine different little mushrooms growing on there. Look at that. The polyps back there have spread into a nice little colony. Our Duncan has now, goodness, that Duncan has about nine different heads on it. It started out only with two. And we started that out in a non-developed, non-cycled mini coral reef tank, about only a five gallon. I think that's when we were using the Fluval Evo Salt 5. And it wasn't looking so well because we added that coral frag to an uncycled tank. It was a brand new tank. You always want to be cautious while using coral and putting it into an uncycled tank because an uncycled tank is not going to... Your coral's not going to adapt to it as well because it, it is used to being in a fully balanced, well-cycled environment, whether it's from your local fish store or it's from another one of your tanks. If you change those parameters too quick, your corals will not like it nine times out of 10. However, there are some pest corals that are very aggressive and they thrive in any circumstance or situation that it really doesn't affect them much at all. So do your research on the corals prior to putting them into a new environment to make sure they are hardy and they can survive a substantial water change or a dramatic one. And the Redactus mushroom, that was just one mushroom back there before. It has split times three. Look at that. And these, which I thought were Duncans when we picked them up, they're, they have like a pom-pom top to them. I don't know what they are, honestly. They just looked really good. They were a good buy, so I went ahead and bought them to add, and to say hello to this coral arrangement here. Not goodbye, but hello. And an update on the Montipora. The Montipora right there, uh, it still has a little bit of that center exposed to it as the mantis shrimp picked it out to make a home for itself 
Previously, when we had the mantis shrimp in this coral tank, which if you've seen our baby mantis shrimp videos, you know to move your mantis shrimp out, as they are not reef friendly, but I was very tolerant and very patient with the mantis shrimp, as I knew this was its home originally, as it came in as a hitchhiker on one of the live rocks that we brought home from the fish store. So I kept it as a pet, and it's right next to it. Its name is Thor, and it lives in that layer right there. You can see the little eyes, actually, right, right there, yep. Let's get these lights back on. And let's hit the lights on this tank. Now this tank right here is a 10 gallon saltwater fish tank and right now it only has one fish in it. If you've seen our anemone journey, once again with an uncycled tank that anemone had an amazing journey, a very interesting one, as well as another clownfish that is no longer here. We are down to one clown. One clownfish, an Ocellaris clownfish, which is really, really cool. It's a little bit of a designer species of clown, hence uh, less of the orange and a little bit of the higher black hue to it, which is really cool. It's very beautiful and it is very aggressive. Even when I go in to clean this tank, this clownfish tries to attack. So maybe I'll go ahead and I'll try to clean up the, the walls of this tank and kind of scrape a little bit of the algae or excess detritus that is growing on the side of the tank and we'll scrub it off but you can see how aggressive this little clownfish can be. Recently added a little snail to keep everything nice and clean because we did have a little bit of a slime algae breakout because there is no heater on this tank as well as not really any UV light. It's just a simple stock LED light that came with this tank which is typically a freshwater tank. But as you see, my favorite fish filters are up on this tank. Check that video out too. And why I use them is all in that video. And another tip is to always have a good flow, especially on the top. And this, I don't know how many gallons per hour this little wave maker power head is, but it is the tiniest and simplest one you could buy. And I have it facing up, so it's not really creating like a hurricane vortex wind inside of this tank to blow everything around, but it definitely keeps all of the current flowing so nothing stays stagnant and there's really no dead spots in this tank. Trust me, that's an underrated tip that should be taken very seriously. Practice that if you don't have a, a wave maker or power head on your saltwater aquarium, get one fast, trust me, it'll make your life 10 times easier. Also, depending on your freshwater fish species, if you have a freshwater aquarium, one can do well as, as well. It could actually serve a really good purpose in a freshwater aquarium. Look at how horrible this aquarium looks. Well, not really, because if you've had an aquarium startup before, if you've started an aquarium, this is the beginning stages of what it looks like prior to cycling an aquarium. This is going through its bacteria cycle, its nitrogen cycle right now is actually taking place. This aquarium has been up for only about three weeks, and it did go through more of a clear spell than it did after the mama minnow in this tank had babies. There's about eight different babies in this tank. Oh, where's that proud? There's that proud mama. Oh, she swam away. So now that there's more fish, which means a little bit more food, and a little bit of a higher waste ratio, there's going to be a little shift in the water parameters. So that's where the bacteria cycle takes its natural course, and it will go ahead and clear up very soon. If you do choose, there are anti-cloud drops, which basically removes the cloudiness from the water that are on the market. I don't have anything to give you direction right now what I personally use because I just allow these tanks to just go ahead and take their own course. So as you can see that will clear up within about two to three weeks at most just depending on how much you feed and how often the water changes you do. Now because they are minnows this is only a five gallon aquarium. I don't really change the water that often. I'd say we're down to about every two weeks maybe every three weeks is the same but I do like to take the waste off of the bottom, but I kind of let this tank be, as well as I do want to make it a planted tank soon, so we go ahead and are probably gonna shift things around a little bit and make it into a planted tank. So it's all fresh water, and it'll have some nice plants to remove these little plastic decorative plants, which are still okay, but I would like to make it more of a self-sustainable ecosystem for these little minnows. Our baby bass, he's getting big, look at him, look at him go, look at him go, eats all the time and is a little bit shy and skittish. We have our albino quarry cat back here, which is still an awesome prized possession of my freshwater aquatics, not to mention the bristle nose pleco that is back behind this aerator that just stopped working actually today I noticed, because I check on it every day. It always has a nice fast spin to this windmill looking of a aerator except right there in the joints. Oh, look at that. As I'm talking, it starts to spin. That's wild. So in those joints right there, if you ever happen to get one of these, they are awesome, super decorative. They look really cool, except over time, a lot of gunk gets kind of 
gathered right there in those joints that actually allow this to keep spinning. So you have to clear them out maybe about once a month or two, but it's, it's really cool when it's working. So we have the albino bristle nose pleco back there that is really, really one of my favorite fish that we've had since this thing was about a centimeter. Now it's about, I don't know, about three to four inches big. So that little guy, he's, he's really cool. Once again, doesn't have a name, but not all of my fish have names. They all have a big place though in our family and in our hearts. Same with the baby bass tank. We have a baby bass over here. Loves to get fed and ooh, woo wee. Mm, isn't that good? Same care for a bass as well as keeping this tank a little bit frequently more cleaned. I'd say every, every week this tank needs a nice clean because how much this bass eats is crazy. Whether it's a large shrimp every day or super worms for that matter, it doesn't stop eating. It's like a garbage disposal. Goodness, you beast. So as I said, we've got a sponge. Let's go ahead and clean this really quick. We'll go ahead and just kind of shimmy the gunk off of the walls and we'll see if this clownfish is gonna permit me to clean its environment or not. All right, we gotta unplug this first. Careful with wet hands around plugs because we know, oh, I've been shocked before. Make sure dry hands around electricity, goodness. Okay, now that we got all of the flow out, you ready, Mr. Clown? You ready? Okay. Are you gonna let me clean your tank today or are you not? Are you gonna let me clean your tank today or are you not? Well, that's my dog, that's Sophie. If you guys haven't seen Sophie yet, she's our hairless, derpy dog. One of the derpiest dogs alive. You could also find them on our channel. We have the weirdest pets I know. I love exotic animals, I love exotic pets. We used to breed ball pythons and bearded dragons for 10 years. So, ooh, this clownfish is not liking, is not liking me. So exotic animals have a huge place in my heart and in our family once again. All of our pets are our family. So, let's see, are you happy? Are you happy? Oh, look, where's the starfish? I saw it moving, there it is. There it is, the brittle star. Okay, so Brittle Star just wanted to come out and say hey real quick. But the clownfish is actually permitting this a lot more than I thought. Normally it attacks my hand. It attacks it like crazy. But it's kind of, I guess, just chilling and a little bit on the relaxed and melancholy state right now. And it's really not going to do what I thought we were what I thought it was gonna do. Take my finger off, right? Which is a good thing. Because the mantis shrimp can do that instead, right? So beautiful. As you can see in the back, I see another one of the starfish. Oh, 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 there it went, right under the rock right there. We have several of them. It's gonna come out on the other side? Of course it will, awesome. We have several of them in here and they love to eat shrimp. They love, they're very carnivorous. They love to eat sinking shrimp pellets as well as the same diet that this clownfish eats as well. So whether it's raw shrimp to shrimp pellets, anything carnivorous, they absolutely love. Very easy to care for, and they are a great cleanup crew. And yes, starfish are faster than you could even imagine sometimes, especially when they think they're getting fed. Because when we cut the flow, as we typically do, right when we feed, they know it. These animals are so smart. And highly instinctful, for that matter. Hello. Are you saying hi hello? Are you saying hello to all of the A1A fam? All of your fans? All of the aquatic and pet animal friendly people and all of our followers, they love you. They love you. Look at these two little stars. Look at these two little stars. Let's get to our other two little stars before we end this video. Go ahead and wave goodbye. Bye, or hello, for that matter. Yep, the derpiest dog alive right here. Now I always include Leo, AKA Leonidas, in every single one of our videos because he is absolutely so popular and so loved by so many of our fans. We always have to show face, right Leo? Leo just woke up from a nap and yes, that is a tongue. Leo has one of the longest tongues, the derpiest dog alive right here. And on that note, we are going to sign out and say goodbye to all of our A1A fam just for this video. That's it until the next adventure. Make sure you look up all of the videos, including this one, with Leo. It's so weird. I know it's a weird animal, but they love you. Oh my goodness. And there's the other one. There's the other one. This is Sophie, this is Sophie, Sophie, Sophie. Goodness. Ooh, she just woke Leo up, he did not like that. Oh, you're up now. 
So to all of our A1A adventure family and friends and followers alike, thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like this video, comment whatever you'd like. We get back to all the comments. A1A fam, we love you. Until the next adventure, stay adventurous. A1A Adventures. Also on that note, if you suggest anything in the comments about what we should do in our future videos or what you want to see more of, go ahead and drop it below. We love the suggestions. Um, we have so many different adventures from uh, outdoor fishing to all of our aquatics, from our dogs to more how-tos, more DIYs. What would you like to see? More instructionals of whatever. Bringing our dog to different places, go ahead and comment them below. Give us more content, more ideas, what you would like to see. Because remember, we do this channel for you. We're signing out. A1A Adventures.